Hi everybody, how's it going? My name is Morten Kaiser and I did a fashion shoot a couple of weeks ago that I was going to talk about today. It's a fashion project that uh, involved a lot of manipulation of the background. I added colors, I added shapes and uh, well this tutorial is sort of like technical. I'm going to walk you through the, the actual steps I did and uh, specifically I'm going to talk about how you use the alpha channel to mask out your main subject from your background. First of all I want to tell you the most important thing is planning. Of course it's important to plan a fashion shoot when it comes to the style, the makeup, prepping the model in the right way, but when it comes to retouching as well. Retouching is nothing I do after the actual shoot. I do it in my mind before. Even though I'm maybe not certain of all the steps, I'm pretty certain of what the final look will be and how I can help myself achieve that with the least effort. For this example I knew I wanted to use very bright and light colors so I knew I wanted to use a totally white background. As you can see there's quite a few steps that I've gone through with this image and uh, to, to talk about them all in detail almost be confusing I guess. So I can just briefly say that uh, I I always go through the original image in quite quite high detail. I I look at all the details. I edit I do the beauty retouching. I edit the colors, like make making this skin tones uniform. And uh, yeah, let's get right to the alpha channel and how to to use the alpha channel tools to mask out your, your subject. So you make sure you have your base layer selected and go into the channels mode. Basically what you do is make, make sure you have your RGB channel selected, go to image calculations and here you have a bunch of uh, bunch of options and uh, well I think it's quite unnecessary to go through the basic, the mathematics, and the, the the programming behind these these options. You should just make sure you have your correct layer selected, or you can have merged. If you only have one one layer, it doesn't matter. And uh, you just uh, play around and see which channel gives you the highest contrast to the background. And uh, yeah, you can see, I, I think I'm going to go with blue blue here. And the blending mode, you can also play around with here. So you want as high contrast as possible. The reason to that is you're going to use the dodge and burn tool. If you haven't done analog photography, it's quite difficult to understand why, where the names come from, the dodging and burning. But yeah, it doesn't matter really. You You just, the burn tool darkens the image and the dodge tool lightens it. If I want to make sure that my dark areas are completely black you take the burn tool, you set the exposure to 100% which makes it powerful, more powerful and you only select the shadow tones. You can see here it, it hardly affects the bright area, the light areas but it totally crushes my, my darker areas. It's important to be careful in, in this type of areas where your background is quite dark already. Like for example here, if I would go over this area, it immediately crushes it as well. So I'm gonna undo that and change to the dodge tool. Make sure your range is in highlights. And you can also use 100% exposure. It's more efficient. And you see it attacks the light area, the highlight areas. And I, I do it over and over again to really to to really get this this edge, get this contrast edge. When you do your own image, make sure you give this the the amount of attention and time it deserves. The, these easy areas, the, I mean, you see, it's it's this fast and this powerful, and uh, yeah, you just have to make sure it's totally crushed to black. But um, 
What about these difficult areas, for example, white on white? You can't use the dodge and burn tools on this area. Well, let's just zoom in and uh, use the lasso tool and uh, just trace the edge here. It's quite an annoying task. It is not nothing impossible and of course if you have this uh, if you have a Wacom tablet it gets much easier yeah you just fill it in with white now this is completely white then you can use the burn tool go to the midtones for example it's a bit of work but you see it's it's doable it's doable and um, well, I'm not going to show you all of it, but my my point is it's worth the work doing it like this. I've tried using plugins and, and stuff like that, and it's it gives good results, but in general, you don't save that much work because the plugins like Fluid Mask and stuff, they usually tackle the easy areas great, but the difficult areas you still have to go into the details and why spend a hundred bucks on a plugin when you can just use this to do the easy areas and manually go through the the, the more complex areas and uh, well I'm not gonna do it all I'm gonna just show you my my alpha channel that I use that I made for this particular image Maybe you're wondering why I built this black and white silhouette of the model against a completely white background. But uh, it's because I want to use this channel now, this black and white silhouette alpha channel, as my layer mask for whenever I want to use it in my layers. And to do that, I, I just ho hold, hold down command and click click on the thumbnail of the alpha channel and uh, I go to layers and uh, you can see all the pixels in the alpha channels are selected now and if I just click on the la add layer mask button down here I get this perfect layer mask excluding the entire model and uh, I can just click command I to invert this of course this is not where I actually need the, the layer mask so I'm gonna delete this one delete and uh, just show you a couple of examples of where I use the layer mask and uh, I'm gonna jump straight to the background I'm gonna first delete this current layer mask delete and I'm gonna switch on this layer it's just a colorization layer with a hue saturation command you see the entire picture it's it's colorized and uh, maybe it's a it's a cool effect but it's not the effect that I was looking for so I'm gonna go back to my channels hold down command and click go to the layers select my my layer I wanna work with I click the add layer mask button and boom there you have it of course sometimes you have to zoom in and check the details and see that it looks okay maybe you have to do some adjustment use some uh, brushes or or these the feathering and the mask edge settings can be quite powerful especially with these complex areas but uh, yeah I'm quite happy with these results and of course this, this file I had prepared before this video so I should be happy so I hope you have all understood what I've been trying to say I know my accent isn't perfect, but what can I say? I'm from Sweden, and uh, if you have any questions, just let me know in the comments or on the blog or anything.